Hi guys, my name is Dion McElroy. I am Mass Ideas Nerve Monitoring Technologist. I do all the nerve monitoring here in the OR. And today I'm going to show you how we um, use the NIM in conjunction to the hypoglossal nerve stimulator surgical process and everything else that goes with it. So now we are going to go over the materials needed um, in regards to our, our hypoglossal nerve stimulator case and how it works during monitoring and, and stimulation. So the three main things that we need for this would be obviously our EMG console or sponsored by Medtronic. Um, a patient interface cable box, which is where the electrodes plug in, as well as the side-by-side -side bipolar. And the third thing is our muting um, detector probe or cable. All this does is it wraps around electrocautery or the electrocautery during surgery and mutes or silences um, all of that electrical noise or artifacts that we don't want to hear during surgery. Makes things a lot easier. So. Um, those are the three things that we're using as far as the monitoring part. The actual electrodes and stimulator we are now going to um, talk about are the following. So the first thing I have um, on our interface cable box, which you should put on the side of the bed. It'll be taped up like this. Um, our first channel we have here would be for the genioglossus channel. That's our blue channel and is what's going to be our inclusion channel. We'll go talk about more of this later. The second channel is our hyostyloglossus channel. That's channel two. And we're going to also uh, set up a third channel, which would be our obiculus oris channel, and that would be down here. In the packaging that we get, there's three things, well, there's two sets of electrodes um, and one side-by-side by side bipolar that we're going to be using, all separate packaging. But with the packaging, we, you are given a ground electrode, a white electrode, which is for stim one return if you're using a monopolar probe, and you also get two paired electrodes or paired subdermal electrodes that go into the channels. So. I'm just going to show you now what it would look like if we need, and if we were in surgery right now and putting the electrodes into the patient interface cable box. So here we have, let's say, this is our genioglossus channel. We are going to take our electrodes here as such and plug it in. Okay, and this, this would go in to our genioglossus um, muscle. So here are our blue channels. We are putting the electrodes perpendicular into the floor of the mouse. The next electrodes that we're going to place are color-coded red. And this is for our hyostyloglossus channel or the exclusion branches or muscle branches of the hypoglossal nerve. These are going into the second channel. The electrodes we are placing um, towards the back of the tongue, superficial to the mucosa. We, another electrode, another channel we're going to set up is a third channel, which is for the upper lip. That is our opicularis oris channel. And so with the packaging that you have for the 18 millimeter um, press paired electrodes, you're not getting a third set of electrodes. And so you're going to have to open up another box um, of press paired electrodes to make that their channel. So here, to make it easy on ourselves, we, um, and we are just taking the blue ones in this case, that way we have red, blue, red, because sometimes it can get a little bit confusing when you're doing it in real time. So this just makes things a little bit easier. But this is for our obicular, um, excuse me, obicularis oculi channel. Okay, and that's going, as I said, into the upper lip. The next set of electrode, electrodes, not electrodes, but electrode we're going to put is, it is the ground electrode and that is very important. Um, in this case, in our 18 millimeter set of um, paired electrodes, you get a white one and a green one. We don't want the white one. We just want the green one. 
the green one, think of green for ground, that's going to go here. This usually you are putting um, into the shoulder of the patient opposite side to where you're performing surgery and it's easier to have it as close as you can to the interface cable box. The last thing that we're going to put in is our lovely side-by-side -side bipolar, um, excuse me, stimulator probe. And this, the reason why you don't need the white electrode is because this is a bipolar probe. And so you're gonna very easily take the two ends and you're gonna put black and black where the stimulator or stim one is and the return part, which is what, what the white electrode should be if you're using a monopolar probe, is going to go above it as such. And there you have your setup. So now that we have gone over our materials and what you are going to need for the monitoring portion and stimulation portion of the surgery, I think it is now important to teach you uh, how to actually create a custom procedure NIM or nerve integrity monitor, monitor template for our actual hypoglossal nerve stimulator case. So I'm going to turn the NIM on. Ooh. So now that we have gone over the materials um, that you need for the monitoring portion and stimulation portion of the case, what I think is also now important for you to know is how we are going to build or make a custom procedure setup um, for our NIM here. This is important because it helps with the actual monitoring portion and how we look at the genioglossus and hyostyoglossus channels and obiculus oris channels um, during the case. So we have turned on our NIM and this is our main screen. It's a setup screen. So once you get to the setup screen, you are going to select a procedure. Here we are going to make a custom procedure. You're going to pick new. And let's just say in this case, we are going to call this Inspire Therapy. Press OK. So now that we are here on our setup screen, the first thing that you want to do when you are here, just take a look at the screen. There's a couple of things going on. Here we have um, our electro check panel. This is usually what comes up right after you have made a procedure. And since we haven't plugged anything in yet because we're not in surgery, you are going to get these X's, which means that we are not hooked up properly. Um, going to create a third channel, like I said. So we already have two channels. We already have our genioglossus channel, hyostyoglossus channel, and orbicular oris channel. So how we make those channels, we are going to go to procedural settings, and here you have channels. This drop-down menu is going to help you make that channel. So sometimes with certain monitors, this is a NIM response 3.0 as opposed to the NIM Neuro 3.0. You might have to click this twice. It's going to deactivate the channel and then I do it again and it'll bring me to the screen where I can name this channel. This channel we're going to call Genioglossus, right? I'm going to press OK. Yay! Now we're going to do Channel 2, again, I deactivated it, and I'm going to create a second channel. This one we are going to call Hyostyoglossus. Press OK. Moving along. And now our third channel, which we are going to call Obicularis Oris, or the upper lip. Sometimes you even will get options, and it makes life so much easier where you can just pick. Here we have our three channels. OK. Another thing I just want to bring your attention to is your event threshold. This is how, um, this is in microvolts. This is sort of the default setting to any kind of monitoring event. So everything, I mean, you're not going to see a lot. I mean, you can, s this monitor can see anything even as little as 50 um, microvolts in an amplitude or the response that it takes. Here we're just, d the default is 100, um, what is it, microvolts. So we're going to save this. This is a pre preliminary save. We're going to overwrite Inspire Therapy. We're going to save it. OK? Now you have all your three channels. OK. So now we are going to move on. We've made our three channels. 
we've looked at our, our excuse me, event threshold, which is at 100 microvolts. And now, and most importantly, and we saved it, I'm sorry, we are going to our advanced settings. This portion is very important when creating the template. You've got three tabs. Um, we've got our audio tab, monitoring tab, and stimulation tab. The whole reason why this is terribly important is because you want to make sure when you are in surgery that you are monitoring and getting the right information. So these are the settings that Inspire and we here at Mass Eye and Air use to make this possible. It's very simple. Um, we, as you can see, we have our stimulus delivery audio. It's a brief tone. We have our monitoring audio. This is, I'm going to take this one off. We're just going to have event tones. So these are the tabs that we are setting up for the monitoring portion. We have three tabs here, the audio, monitoring, and stimulation tab. All of these are very important because we want the right information when we are monitoring in real time. So as you can see, here are the settings that Inspire um, has suggested and recommended and how we have it set up in RNIM. So this is for our audio tab, for our stimulation delivery audio, brief tone. The monitoring audio is, is only the event tones um, box is checked off. And then if you go further down here for the volume balance, for the EMG audio we have three, event tones two, and voices three. Moving on, we are now into the monitoring tab. This right here is your bread and butter. You really need to not only pick the right things, but, um, and as I've learned along the way, really understand these settings because again, you are monitoring in real time and you want to have the right information. Um, sometimes you can't go back and say, hey, let me fix this. So it's better to pre-program all of this before you go into surgery and you have a template set up. It just makes things that much easier. Looks like a lot, I know. Here we have, I mean, what this really is saying is you've got a view scale here. This is how information is being displayed, our EMG is being displayed. We have it set up at 500 microvolts by 50 um, milliseconds. Here you have your measurement cursor position, peak amplitude. That is the top part of the EMG wave, okay? That's what we've chosen. For the waveform filter, we have low frequency filter. Um, all this means is that you are going to have, when you're putting electrodes, um, putting the electrodes in, there will be rubbing um, against the skin, tissue, anything like that. This is on as a filter to stop any of that, okay? Um, going forward, we are under sequence display. So the way that the information is being displayed with your EMG monitoring, it is the last thing that you've seen. It's not the largest overall um, EMG wave. So we have picked the last thing that you've seen. Latency, latency. The time it takes for the actual stimulator to touch down, send a current or deliver a current to the nerve and then give us a response back. The latency is, is the duration of time. That's all it means. It's the measurement of time that it takes for the stimulator to deliver current, reach the nerve, and then give us something back which is the response and is measured in microvolts and that is our amplitude. The onset, um, we're measuring at the onset or at the beginning of when the, the stimulator touches down um, and delivers current to the nerve. And then just here with the snapshot, so what happens when you are taking a snapshot of your EMG wave, this is a feature that we have to help record. So if you ever want to record, you, um, and have a thumb drive, you can put the thumb drive here and you can record your actual EMG waves and create a report, a snapshot report of all your EMG activity. So this is really just um, touching upon that where the snapshot is when you, um, when you use a stimulator and you get a response, it can just print and then save, okay? The last part we're going to is stimulation. Um, the stimulation setting. This is really important as well. Obviously all of this is really important, but the monitoring and stimulation again is really important because you want to make sure that you're having the right information put in before we actually go into surgery and you don't have to be fiddling with things um, in real time. Uh, uh, you preparation is key, I suppose. So here we're using the side-by-side -side bipolar stimulator. So all we're doing here is you've got um, stimulator one and stimulator two. Because it's a side-by-side -side bipolar, we're gonna pick bipolar. The rate, 
we're going to do four seconds by 100 on both sides, okay? That is this part right here, okay? You've got this both plugged in. That is why we had this set up the exact same way because it's going, it's literally the same thing. You have the stim one return and the actual stim return, okay? For our warning level, this, what this means is with all the stimulation, there is a cutoff. The warning level, um, if, there's, if the EMG is too high or the stimulator, excuse me, the stimulator is set too high, it's at two. It's two milliamps, as you can see, okay? You'll get a dialogue box. If the surgeon says, you know, increase the stimulation to this, in this case, we can't go any higher than 2.0 or 2 milliamps. The last thing I want to point out is this part right here, the rejection period, we have set it to 0 0.8 milliseconds and rejects impulse artifacts. Um, that is, again, to help, to help silence that electrocautery and all that um, electrical interference. We are now back, once we've saved all that, we're again back to our main screen. The last thing I want to show you, we have set up our channels. We have talked about event threshold. We went into our advanced settings and we set up all three tabs, the audio monitoring and stimulation tab. And the last thing that you should also set up is right here. Um, like I said, we have our stimulation stim one set at one. We actually want to start off pretty low. Um, and in real time, when we're stimulating the hypoglossal nerve, we actually start as low as 0 0.3. And the way that this works is that we are, um, the course or the route of stimulation is we are moving from inclusion to exclusion. And we are trying to identify the breakpoint. So we start off usually at a really low, um, what is it, stimulation, which is 0 0.3 milli milliamps. We are going to save that. Again, we don't want it as a new procedure because we've already put all this information in and you don't want to lose any of that information. You're going to overwrite it and it is now going to save that way. So now that we've set up our settings or monitoring settings that we want to, we are going to actually go up here to this monitoring tab. I'm going to turn the volume down because you are going to get this, this crazy sound. This is event capture. This just kind of freezes the screen in real time. But this is all the settings that we've made, as you can see, okay? So now you are ready for monitoring. So here we are on our main monitoring screen. When we are actually in surgery, intraoperatively, what we are looking for, as we have our three channels here, um, we want to see the most EMG activity or electromyographical activity on our genioglossus branch um, channel, I'm sorry, which identifies the inclusion branches and minimal activity on our hyostyoglossus channel, which are our exclusion branches. So now that we've gone over everything in regards to materials, monitoring, um, and pretty much everything in setup. I hope this answers any questions and all questions that you have in regards to setting up for a hypoglossal nerve stimulating case. Thanks.